write us to at hebrew at nbn.org.il. If you're joining us live on Zoom, you can write it in the chat window. Otherwise, email us. We'd love to hear your requests because this class is really meant to be as user-friendly, as user-focused as possible. Um, so it's really important we hear from you what topics you'd like us to cover. Um, you can always uh, go through our previous lessons on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com. Type in Cafe Ole or Nefesh Benefesh, you'll see a playlist of all of our previous lessons, as well as our um, vocabulary spreadsheets from those lessons. Um, we're actually going to take a break after this, after today's class at the end of June 2023. We're going to take about two weeks of break and then rejoin in mid-July, July 17th for our summer session. We really would love to hear from you what topics you'd like to um, us to cover. If you are on our mailing list um, to get both the recordings and the spreadsheets of our lessons, but also for future um, Cafe Ole sessions, you'll also be getting a um, evaluation survey. It's really important um, that my colleagues at Nefesh Ben Nefesh and myself hear from you what you like, what you'd like us to do more of, um, suggestions you have. We'd really love to hear from you as well as always. Um, with that, we're going to get started. Um, this is a user request that asked us to go over something that's pretty basic but pretty fundamental. I had to do it today, actually, in fact, so that was also further inspiration, but also because um, I looked at our previous lesson we've done on it, which was quite a while ago, and the vocabulary needed to be a little uh, up, or as we say in Hebrew, um, but as we say in Hebrew, to get improved. So with that, we're going to talk today about banking in Israel. Banking in Israel has a lot of the same uh, traps and fun and challenges as in any other country, but here we have some unique things that happen. And there's also some words that simply don't translate um, together. So whether you are fresh off the plane or the boat as it were, or you've been here for many years and you still don't get it, I hope to provide a little bit of clarity when we talk about banking in Israel. As always, if you have questions about this specific class as I'm teaching, please write in the Q&A. Anything else about any other lesson, requests, comments, anything, please write it in the chat window. We'll only be looking at the Q&A and reviewing the chat in the next few days. So let me open up the spreadsheet for today. As always, you are welcome to, um, you are welcome to, uh, uh, screenshot old school pen and paper, write this out. You'll also be getting a copy of this. Again, if you are subscribed to us through Nefesh Benefesh, you'll get this by email. Otherwise, it'll be uploaded along with this video in the next few days on YouTube as an attachment. Okay, let's start with the simplest word, bank. Bank is bank. Um, bankaut is banking. We simply take the word bank and we add the ending ut. Ut um, is a very common ending in uh, Hebrew. Let me just write that out here so you can see it. Bankaut. Bankaut, banking, and that is actually female. Bankaut, if it'll let me do this. There we go. Bankaut. Ut. Ut at the end of a word um, is very common in Hebrew to both the verbal noun, the act of doing something, but also the general concept of um, something that's encapsulated in the noun. So in this case, bank. Bank is a bank. The act of doing something reg regarding a bank, in a bank, around a bank, bank ut, banking. Right, we have this term, it comes up again and again as an ending. It can sometimes be the equivalent in English of T-I-O-N at the end of a word, or just simply I-N-G as you see here. Okay, so banka and banka ut is banking. Okay, let's keep going. Um, there are multiple banks in Israel, bankim is the plural, and each one has multiple snifim. Snifim is the plural of snif. Snif is a branch. Branch as in a uh, branch of a larger office, right? So snif habank sheli, habank sheli hu bank leumi. My bank is bank leumi. 
And Sneef Habankshali, my, my bank's branch, the branch I'm connected to, Bedizengov Sento. Nimtza Bedizengov Sento is located in Dizengov Sento. Okay, so Bank is the larger one, Sneef is the next down. Um, each Sneef, first off in Israel, um, because we use the IBAN and SWIFT um, codes to, for wire transfers, um, IBAN and SWIFT, uh, for my fellow Americans, you're going to need to know about this, especially if you're doing international transactions. Essentially, most of the world, with the ex notable exception of the United States, is not um, usually a part of this. It helps for more direct wire transfers. There's other ways to do transfers, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but each bank in Israel is assigned a number. It's a two-digit number. And then each branch of a bank has its own number. So when you're doing wire transfers within Israel and internationally, you use these numbers to further define your specific next word, cheshbon. Cheshbon is both the bill at the end of a meal or the bill that you need to pay, but it's also the word we use for your bank account. Cheshbon bank, or simply cheshbon is your bank account. Right, so all of these have numbers assigned to them to further specify who you are. The bank has a number. For example, um, Bank Lumi is number 10. So when you're doing both a wire transfer, but you'll also see at the bottom of your checks, it'll have 10 on it if you belong to Bank Lumi. If you belong to my Snifa Bank, Snif Bank Lumi, if you belong to my branch, you'll see um, my number is 806. They usually also have a name. Um, mine happens to be called Lev Dizengoff, um, the heart of Dizengoff, um, but its number is 806, right? That's also used for coding and tracking. And then finally, the account number, you don't need to know that, not because you're going to um, wire me any money and you certainly can't get into it anyway. So that's irrelevant. Okay, so these two, they all have different um, numbers and signatures. Within a bank, if you belong, for example, like I do from Bank Lumi, you can use all of their um, banks if you need to, for example, order checks. Um, that's still a very big deal in Israel is to get uh, physical checks, often for rent. Um, that's something you can get ordered to the nearest sneef to you. The, it's usually um, conventional wisdom to find a, uh, to sign up for a bank account at the branch nearest to you, you also want to go from community advice. People who say um, some are uh, more friendly than others, some are more English friendly than others or other languages. Um, the services are not going to change between the major banks in Israel, folks. There is no reason to shop around other than proximity and convenience. And you happen to know that there's an English speaking staff on hand. Okay. The most basic part of your bank account in Israel is called Ovel Veshav. Okay, um, we don't talk about this a lot, but it's really important, especially as we're talking a lot about finances in Israel and cost of living, and we're gonna get to those words in a little bit, but this is the basis. This is the money that you have in your account. Your account by default is like in many other countries, what we would call elsewhere, a checking account. In Israel, we call it Ovel Veshav. Ovel means passing and Shav returning, right? You can think of this term. It's also um, abbreviated as Osh or Ush, right? When you see those two apostrophes between the second to last and last letters, you know that it means that it's abbreviated for something. And in this case, um, it stands for Ovel Veshav, and you'll even see this if you go online to your bank account. It'll often say at the top, Osh, on the, on the main page, or have a list of transactions that have taken place in your account, and it will say Osh, standing for Ovel Veshav. Okay, you can think of this as a checking account. This is simply a list of your transactions. Okay, if you were thinking of this in terms of checking, there's also savings accounts in Israel. We don't um, they, they do exist. Um, we can talk about that a little bit more if people have more questions about it. There's basically two kinds of checking of savings accounts in Israel that you would open up at a bank. The first one is chisachon. This is more long-term savings. Um, this isn't something that necessarily um, yields a great return vis-a-vis -vis interest. Um, this is a long-term savings account. Chisachon, and we're going to come back to this word in a little bit, comes from the verb to save money. Okay, so 
this is the best thing giving it as a savings account in that it's a long-term account. You usually have um, a set time to add more money, to deposit more money into it. Not necessarily, but it's a long-term one. It's not going to yield um, a lot for you uh, in the short term. And that's as opposed to another one that many Israelis have, um, especially younger Israelis, is a picadon. Picadon is the word we also use, by the way, for um, bottle deposit. Any of you, I don't have a bottle lying around right now. In Israel, we do have bottle deposit. And you will see this as a separate charge when you go to buy things in bottles at the supermarket or grocery store. And it says on the label, Chayav Picadon, 30 agorot, 30 agorot. Okay. So yes, you can, by law, um, bring back bottles that are sold in the same store to a store and they will refund that 30 agorot to you. Picadon is also the term we use for a uh, short-term savings account. Sorry, just one second. Oh. <clears throat> just wrap the text so you can all see it. There we go. Okay. Okay. Um, Picadon, where do we go here? There we are. Picadon is a short-term savings account. And as I wrote here, line eight, it's with infrequent or no additional deposits. Um, this is often made, for example, uh, for soldiers when they first go into service. Um, a lot of young people will do this either by themselves or their parents will. Um, it's basically, a, think of it like a um, certificate of deposit. Um, for those of you who know what that is, it's essentially you put in a set amount of money and you just let it sit there for a fixed amount of time. It can be a month, it can be six months, it could be a year, it could be more than that, but it's usually a fixed amount of time. Usually you know what the return is going to be for it, but it's short term. It's very short term. It has its own life expectancy. Um, there usually is a fee if you want to withdraw early or you simply can't. Um, but as opposed to a long-term savings, picadon um, uh, is, is for a very specific amount of time. Okay, let's move on to some basics you'll see in your bank account. Hotsaot. Hotsaot comes from the verb lehotsi, to take out. Um, those of you with a more religious observance background, you know the blessing for bread and bread products, hamotzi lechemin ha'aretz, who brings forth bread from the from the land. That's the same root, the same sholesh, the same three letters that we have for hotzaot. Hotzaot are expenses. They can be business expenses, personal expenses, whatever they are. Hotzaot are expenses, right? Think of it as you're taking money out of your wallet. Versus achnasot. Achnasot are is money coming into your account. Um, this is hachnasa, the uh, singular version of this. Hachnasa is also the term we use for income. Okay. Achnasa comes from the verb lahachnis, to cause to enter. So anything that comes into your account, achnasot. That's not just income, by the way. That could be a refund on something. That could be if you are um, self-employed like I am and you have multiple streams of income. Anything that's coming into your account that puts you into positive, achnasot. Okay, move along. Kaspomat. Kaspomat is our word for ATM. It's the same idea. Automated teller machine. Kaspomat, kesef is money. And mat is like automat or laundromat right? Automatic. So automatic money machine, kaspomat, right? So whenever you see this word, you know it's an ATM. Not all ATMs are equal, by the way. Some are very equal, some are not. If it's affiliated with the bank, they will all charge you the same commission, whether you are part of that bank or not. If I go to my bank Lumi, doesn't matter if it's my specific branch or any other bank Lumi ATM or any other bank ATM, I'm going to be charged the same 1.65 shekels to use that, that um, ATM. There are, by the way, private ATMs in this country. They charge upwards of six shekel 
per transaction. You want to be careful not to use those unless you know what you're doing. They usually also take off your credit card as opposed to your bank account. You'll know the difference because it's attached to a mini market or a store, not an actual bank. So if it doesn't have a bank's logo on it, but it has credit card logos on it, chances are it is not a bank affiliated customer amount and it can charge you upwards of six, maybe even more um, shekel commission fee. Okay, with regards to the money you get out of a kaspomat, usually you get shtarot. You will always get shtarot. Shtar, one shtar is a bank note. Shtarot are bank notes, okay, bills. And matbea or matbeot are coins. This is also the term we use in general for currency, not money, currency, matbea. So for example, foreign currency is matbea chutz, literally outside currency. Just like how we say foreign ministry here in Israel is is misrada chutz, right? The outside, external affairs, you could think of it. But matbea chutz is foreign currency. Okay, let's get to some more words, especially important. We're talking about banking in Israel. Lots of important words here. Let's start with the big one, ashrai. Ashrai means credit. In Israel, great reminder for those of us who've been here for a while, those of us who have yet to be here, those of us who are brand new, credit in Israel. Banks are very risk averse in Israel. And when you go to sign up for a bank account, they will give you this, a misgeret, right? A misgeret is a framework. That's the usual word we use for a frame, like around a picture. But it also means line. And when we use these two words together, row 16 and 15, misgeret ashrai, it's your credit line. The bank in Israel issues you a credit line. It issues you a credit line to two things. And this is really important to understand when you first sign up to make sure you understand all the numbers you're seeing. When you get, when you sign up for a bank in Israel, you're getting a misgeret ashrai, ashrai for your cheshbon. And you're getting a misgeret ashrai for kartise ashrai, for credit cards. What do I mean? In Israel, and we're going to talk about this in a little bit when we get to the words for overdraft. Your account, your Ovel Vashav bank account in Israel has a credit line that allows you to go into what in other countries would be called overdraft. And it is overdraft, but it's sanctioned. And we're going to get to that word in a second. But you're given a certain amount that you're able to do that with interest, with all sorts of other things attached to it. But it's essentially a built-in credit line into your bank account, not to your credit cards. That's a separate oftentimes the same amount on your credit cards that are also issued by the bank, okay? There are external or non-bank credit cards in Israel. They're called chutz bankai, those two words we just had, right? Chutz, external, and banka, bank, bank, bankai, banking, or bankish, if you, if you wanna think of it like that way. Um, there are some, and it's growing in um, number, and also the idea, the plan is in Israel that all credit cards will be, will be phased out to become entirely um, non-bank. Banks can certainly um, offer them still, but all will be by default non-bank issued, as opposed to now where the default is bank issued credit cards. Okay, so number one, when you sign up for a bank account in Israel, they're going to ask you a number of things, including how much money you're going to deposit. And based on that, and if you're um, employed or if you're getting money from a pension or from a fixed income or whatever it may be, from that, they're going to give you a misgeret ashrai. If you don't know what's happening at first, it often can be very, very small, which is not good, right? Because your misgeret ashrai also allows you to pay your credit cards, your other bills and expenses, bills and other things, the ability for you to withdraw money, all sorts of other things. So you need to make sure that this is appropriate and whatever interest comes with it, as well as for your credit cards to know what the credit limit on your cards is. Um, usually you can renegotiate these once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, the one for your bank account is much harder to negotiate and less often you'll be able to change that. That's called misgeret ashrai osh, right? If you wanted, for example, um, let's say you have a bank account 
when you first sign up and you don't quite communicate that you have money coming in or you have a job lined up or you don't, and they give you a very, very small misgeret ashray osh or misgeret osh is also what it's called. And let's say it's one or 2,000 shekel. That means so long as you're in the, the uh, black, you're fine, right? If you're above zero, you're always going to be fine. You can't dip any more than that misgeret ashray on your bank account, right? We're going to get to those words in a second. If you have more money coming in, you can extend that more. It doesn't mean you have to use it, just like a credit line. It doesn't mean you have to use it, but it's there as support, okay? But it's initially going to be small based on whatever you put in and the bank's um, on-the-spot risk assessment of who you are, okay? That's in addition to the misgeret ashray they give you for your credit cards. And we'll get to uh, talk about that really quickly. Remember that credit cards in Israel don't work the same way as credit cards elsewhere. They're usually, and we're gonna talk about this with very few exceptions, there is no minimum payment per month. If you charged 2000 shekel on your, what's called a credit card, right? At a certain day of the, of the month that you agree upon with your banker, all 2000 shekels are gonna come out of your account. That's where this extra line of credit is really important because your credit card most of the time will not work like an American style credit card, rather like a debit card. Okay, and we're gonna get to come back to that in a second. Over and under, these are words that are often used also with hotza'ot and hachnasot, right? Expenses, income. When you are looking at your bank statement, and this is certainly the case for Bank Lomi, which is one of the biggest banks in Israel, they will call money that comes in as zikui. Okay, zikui can mean over, like I put here in quotation marks. Zikui can also mean money that is owed to me, right? This is the word that we use, for example, if you get store credit at a um, store for returning or exchanging an item, it's called zikui, okay? It's a financial amount that typically means it's coming into your account. The reverse of that is chova. Chova is something that you pay out, a debt, an obligation, all these words are, have the same Hebrew term chova. In this case, it means quote unquote under, meaning it's something you're paying out. So like I gave that example of the 2000 shekel from your credit card that was issued by the bank, or let's say it wasn't issued by the bank, it's from American Express. It will list in your list of osh, in your list of transactions, it will say chova alpaim shekel. Chova, meaning things, obligations and things that have been paid, 2000 shekel. Okay, zikui plus chuvah minus. Okay, let's get to some words that also have to do with this plus and minus and expenses versus income is also how we pay for things, but also how we're paid by things. Not just if you're self-employed, but someone owes you money. Someone needs to wire you money, but also you need to pay for things. In Israel, we have a number of ways to pay for things, not just with a credit card and not just with cash. Cash, mezuman, Credit cards, kaltis, literally the word for card, ashrai, credit. One of them, many of you are already familiar with, is called hora'at keva. Hora'at keva is when money comes out of your account, not your credit cards, but your account. You can do it that it's based on your credit card, but typically, the vast majority of people do hora'at keva, it's directly from their bank account. So a lot of people, for example, will pay um, their alnona, their municipal tax through hora'at keva, because it's a fixed amount every, um, every other month, it comes out of your bank account and you don't even have to do the transaction. If you set up hora'at keva, um, it's usually a simple operation. Sometimes you can do it over the internet. Sometimes you have to do it in person, but it basically makes an, um, understanding between you, the bank, and the provider, in this case, the municipality that you need to pay your taxes to, that at a certain, that when the bill comes in, the bill goes immediately to your bank account and they have immediate access to withdraw the requested amount. Okay, in plain English, standing order. Hora'a means um, a, a directive, an announcement, and keva, fixed. Okay, so think of it as a fixed order or a fixed announcement or a fixed instruction. Okay, you can also, by the way, do this on credit cards. Um, it will, both of these things, and it's very important, um, especially with uh, 
uh, your credit card, it will go into your credit misgeret, into your credit limit, into your framework. Um, so you need to bear that in mind if you decide to do this or not. It's usually, again, mostly done through your bank account. So if your um, alnona is 240 shekels every other month, um, it'll come directly out of your bank account if you decide to do it like that, or you do it a one-time payment with credit card each time. Another important thing that not a lot of people know about, and this is equally important when we're paying bills and especially utility bills. Holat Keva is used a lot for utility bills, things that come either regularly and or have a fixed price. So that can be things like your telecommunications, your cell phone bill, your telecommunications, also internet, um, your alnona, your municipal tax, other things that are a fixed amount, other things that aren't fixed like your electricity, because that will go up and down depending on the year, or your water bill, or your gas bill, if you have gas, um, and you na use natural gas for cooking and heating. Whatever it may be, the other way that you can pay things is not just with a credit card, not even with a check, not even with uh, cash, something called Havara Bankait, okay? When you start using um, your bank online and you get used to using the website, and I'm going to talk about this and remind me if I don't talk about websites versus apps. We need to talk about that. Very important. Um, certainly for Bank Lomi, certainly for other banks, they have the option of Havara um, Bankait. And this allows you through the website and comes directly from your bank account, not from your credit cards, from your bank account, you can transfer money within Israel with ease. And you can even pay bills like this. So you can pay many municipalities, not all, many municipalities allow you to pay your Arnona through Havara Bankait. You can pay your taxes through Havara Bankait. You can pay um, a whole bunch of other bills, utility bills through it. Um, it's a very simple operation. Um, on Bank Lomi's website, it'll say on the right-hand side, once you enter your account, it'll say Havarot, transfers. You click on it, and it'll have a whole list of options there. You can also, by the way, transfer money to um, other Israeli bank accounts this way. So if you pay your rent, for example, through bank transfer, or you owe friends money and you don't want to do it through the apps like um, Bit or Paybox because you want to do it through your bank account and not through a credit card, Havara Bankaid is a really simple, easy way to do this. Okay, let me go back to what I said about Misgeret Ashai because these two words are really, really, really important when we talk about finances in Israel. Minus and Meshichat Yetel. Minus is what I was talking about with that misgeret, right? Minos is the bank afforded an interest bearing credit line on your bank account. Not credit cards, your bank account, right? When I said that, let's say the bank gives you a misgeret ashrei on your osh, on your transactions of 2000 shekel, that means between zero and 2000 shekels, you're fine and minus 2000 shekels. Right? You can be in the negative up to 2,000 shekels because that's the misgeret, the line that they gave you, and you're fine. Right? Many Israelis live in minus, whether it's the end of the month or they're living on whatever it may be. Many Israelis have minus. It does come with interest, and that's one of the things you need to be sure that you know how much interest it comes with depending on how far into your minus you are because there usually are stages of it. You don't have to be a minus, of course. If you're above zero in your bank account and you're in the plus, great, wonderful. But know that when you sign up for a bank account, you have this minus, you have this misgeret built in, and that number can change based, again, on your income or steady amounts of hachnasot that come in, right? But this is important to know um, what your misgeret is, okay? However, minus is not the same thing, right? Minus oftentimes, because it sounds like minus, people want to translate into English as overdraft. Minus is not overdraft. Very important. Overdraft is the term in Hebrew, meshichat yetel, and it is the translation of overdraft. Meshicha, we're going to get to this word in a little bit, is withdrawal, to withdraw, the act of withdrawing, and yetel, over. So overdraft, this means you've gone over that misgeret the bank has given you. So if your misgeret is 2,000 shekel, 
This means anything from 2001 shekel more, you are in Mishichat Yeter. Mishichat Yeter is not good. Oftentimes the bank, because it's so risk prone, and even though it's charged you all that interest on being in minus, the moment you go into Mishichat Yeter, even without um, warning, sometimes they will give you warning, they'll freeze your bank and any other assets you have in that bank, they'll call you and ask you what's going on. We want some money in the bank to open up your account again. Sometimes they'll close your account um, permanently. It's very important to know what your misgeret is um, for all, everyone, olim and sabras alike, because many people live in minus in this country and they are very much aware of how much misgeret they have and when that limit is. And that limit is called mishichat yetel, overdraft. Okay, so let's move on here. Just one second. Okay, let's get to some other things the bank does, both for your help and sometimes, well, not. Halva'a, right, a loan. Um, banks give loans. They're usually the primary place people look for loans. There are other places, by the way, in Israel, you can get loans legally. Um, there's a great website, by the way, for those of you, especially who are um, self-employed or are looking to finance a project of some kind called Blender, um, where it's a crowdsource of uh, loans that basically you pitch them what you need it for, and they will find micro donors to help you out. Um, it's a very nice, more communal way to get a loan as opposed to going to the bank, which you can certainly do, comes with interest and all those words we're going to get to in a second, but a halva'a. Um, and when you sign up for halva'a, it'll ask you what its purpose for. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to limit um, what you're doing it for. And that's, by the way, if you go in person or if you go online. Many banks offer um, what they call digital loans. It simply means they're going to do it if you're eligible for the loan after they check your credit line and your income and all of that um, to, to make the uh, call over the internet rather than going in person to the bank. Okay, the word we've been hearing about for quite some time in the news here in Israel and frankly around the world, and you always need to know this word, is ribit. Ribit means interest. Okay, um, Israel Lots of things come with interest. You need to know this word, um, what it is now, what it is in relation to um, interest on your loans or on your misgeret ashray, as we talked about, or anything like that. Ribit is really important. This is also a really important um, thing that sort of usually not sort of usually, let's be more definitive here. In other countries, they've either done away with or it um, isn't nearly as big of a deal as it is in Israel. This is amala. Amala is best translated as commission. This is um, all the different transactions you do with the bank are charged in amala. For example, like I said, using a kaspumat, an ATM, across Israeli banks using an Israeli card, you're usually charged 1.65 shekel. To do a havara bankait, right? To do a bank transfer, you are charged an amala. To um, open up your, to uh, deposit, uh, withdraw money early from something or to pay back a loan early or something like that is, um, is uh, uh, charged an amala, right? Everything has an amala in Israel. Um, it is under a lot of scrutiny and all banks have to um, uh, publish their entire list of amalot and how much they are. Um, there isn't much difference between them, between banks, but you can see a comparative list of all of them by simply going to each bank that you're interested to, but just know and factor this into your finances. Amala is a big deal. Okay, Moed Chiyuv, this is also important. Like I said, credit cards in Israel by default are debit cards, meaning that um, when the time of the month comes to pay the balance on your credit card, it's going to pull out the entirety from your bank account, right? So let's say you have a Visa card that's, that you got from Bank Lumi, right? And on the you've agreed, they give you a number of um, options of which day of the month 
to get um, the money um, to pay off your credit card bill. Usually you do it in connection to when you get your muscolet, your salary. Most people get their salary between the first and the 10th of the month. It's actually by law, by the 10th of the month, you need to get your salary. Um, so let's say it's on the 10th, right? On the 10th, you know, payday has already come. Everything, rent is taking care of everything else and the rest are your credit card bill. You've picked the 10th of the month as your moed chiyuv. That's the day that the credit card company, which is essentially the bank, will pull out the total sum of balance on your card from your bank account, right? That's why you need to know all those different things at once. The misgeret ashrai of your bank account and the misgeret ashrai of your credit cards. Because if you go over and under, that's going to make a difference. Okay, moed chiyuv, you can change this. You obviously can't change it immediately before the act is supposed to happen, but usually once it's happened, you can then go in and change it. It's usually um, two to three weeks before the scheduled date. You can go in and change it if you need to. That is different from the next thing, and this is relatively new in Israel. Chiyuv kavua. Chiyuv kavua. Chiyuv means a charge or a debt. It's the same root, again, that we had for a chuvah. And kavua is like horat keva. It's the same root of keva. Kavua means fixed. This is a relatively new um, feature that the major banks offer, obviously with interest, obviously with all sorts of things to it. But this allows you to use your bank-issued credit cards as an American-style credit card. What do I mean? Let's say the balance on your bank-issued credit card in Israel is 2,000 shekel. I can sign up for Chiyuv Kavua for my bank and only and at that tenth of the month, instead of the entirety of that 2,000 shekel being um, withdrawn from my account, I can specify the amount that gets pulled out. The, usually the minimum is 500 shekel, right? So I can say out of that 2,000 shekel, I only want on the tenth of the month 500 shekel pulled out, okay? Obviously that means I only have 1,500 shekel left on my credit line, but it also means I have 1,500 shekel still in my bank account. So there's an up and down in using this. And in addition, of course, you're charged interest on whatever the rest of the bill that hasn't been paid, just like an American style credit card, right? So like the minimum payment, you know that you can get from other credit cards in America, for example, in other countries, you know that comes with interest on it. Same thing here with the Chiyuv Kavua. It just allows you to space out payments so long as you have that cushion to do it and you recognize how much interest you're paying on it. Okay, so if you're interested in this, you need to look at your bank statement and to discuss with your bank, either online or in person, to set up a chiyuv kavua for your bank-issued credit cards. This is only for bank-issued credit cards. I haven't heard if it's been done for external bank, bank cards yet, external bank credit cards yet. If it has, great. If not, no, this is an option with some banks. Okay, some other words to know and get to some questions. Iska is a deal or a transaction. We usually use this term in terms of financial dealings, but that can also be used in just a simple operation um, in the bank. Bitsua is an execution, not execution like execution like to um, accomplish something. It's the fancier verb for la'asot. La'asot means to do or to make. Levatsea, from which we get this verbal noun, bitsua, means to execute, to undertake. And then equally important, especially when we're talking about credit cards, um, but this can also be for your picadon or anything else, is tokef. When you are um, ordering something online, It'll, you know, where all the different um, things that it asks you for. But when you're speaking to someone on the phone and you're paying for something by um, credit card over the phone, they'll ask you for your mispal kaltisa shrai, the number of your credit card. They'll ask you for the ta'arich. They'll ask, excuse me, they'll ask you for the three numbers on the back of the card. And then they'll simply say, instead of the date of expiration, like I just started to say, they'll simply say tokef. All they'll say is tokef. They're not going to say tarich tokef or tarich anything else, tarich akartis. All they're going to say is tokef. Tokef means the validity, or in this case, the expiration date. 
Okay, so tokef are the four letters, four, excuse me, numbers that indicate the month and year that your um, credit card or debit card is valid until that they're asking for. So when you hear the word tokef in modern Hebrew folks, I know you're gonna um, start raising your hands about the high holy days and you know that word from something else. Tokef in modern Hebrew means the expiration date or the validity of something. To give something validation is also this word, tokef. Um, if you take public transportation in Israel, you'll hear ongoing announcements from the loudspeakers asking you to litakef et akaltis, to validate your card, right? Because you need to pay at the automated thing, no longer by the, um, just by the driver. Okay, let's get to some verbs that we use for the bank and then answer some questions. Okay, lehamir. Lehamir is to convert. This, by the way, is a verb that we also use to convert as in to convert philosophically or ideologically or religiously for um, to convert to Judaism and to convert to Islam and Christianity. We have specific words for that, but lehamir is also used to convert religions, but it, we're talking about it here into currency. Lehamir matbea. If I needed to convert dollars into shekel, if shalamir la shekel and I hand the teller or whoever is in charge um, the money. So le hamir le, it's followed by the preposition le to convert to something. Okay, when we go to the ATM to the Kaspelman, it's gonna ask you for a couple different things you'd like to do. And one of them is meshicha. Meshicha is literally pulling, but in banking terms, it means withdrawal. Limshoch means to pull, but it also means to withdraw. Okay. Lehalvot kesef to loan money. Okay. Halva'a, we said, is a loan. Lehalvot is the act of giving a loan. We said a havara bankait is a bank transfer. The verb is lehaavir, to transfer. To deposit money is lehafkid. Um, and ATMs in Israel, you cannot, you, um, uh, can both deposit to your own account. And if you have the details, the bank um, account details of someone else, you can actually deposit money into their account even without a card. Um, it's a great uh, service as well if you have cash. Lechayev is to charge or to bill, right? To have a chova, to give someone a chova, to give them an obligation or a debt to pay. And lachsoch, a very important word in 2023. Lachsoch is to save, but specifically to save um, time or money in this case. It doesn't mean to save someone or to save something. Like I cherish something or I'm preserving something. It means to save time or to save money or things in that direction. Ani chosech zman shani mazmin ochel. I save time when I order food. Okay. But I save money when I cook. Okay, that's how we use this verb, lachsoch. And it's related, of course, to that word chisachon we had before, saving account. Okay. Butza and hit batzea. Anytime you use any um, electronic function to do banking in Israel, whether it's your computer and online, or most importantly, the Kaspelmat ATM, when you are done with doing your um, the transaction, that ISKA that we talked about, it's often going to say, as it says here on the left, and I purposely put it without vowels because this is how it's going to read, ha-ISKA butza, or ha-ISKA hit batza b'hatzlacha. ISKA is the deal or the transaction. Butza is the past tense passive form of the verb levatsea, to undertake, to execute, versus the transitive version, hit batsea, was undertaken, or became undertaken, became, uh, was under, got undertaken, along those lines. It's not passive, but it's not active either. Ha'iska butza b'hatzlacha, or ha'iska hit batza b'hatzlacha. Either way, first off, when you see the word hatzlacha at the end, it means successfully. Okay, so you know you're in the good when it says hatzlacha on anything successfully. But it's simply telling you that the transaction has been executed, has been done. Okay, or it's going to say habitsua or ha'iska, right? The transaction or the execution 
הסתיים בהצלחה, our next word, הסתיים. לסיים means to finish, להסתיים means to get finished, to become finished, right? הביצוע הסתיים בהצלחה, the um, execution, the undertaking has been accomplished successfully, or has been completed successfully. לסיים means to finish. Okay, these are the verbs you're gonna use the most when we're talking about banking in Israel. Okay, I wanna break here for questions as I see we have quite a lot of them. Um, I heard there was a merger between Bank Lumi and Valley Bank. I don't know about that. Um, Valley Bank, I believe is not an Israeli bank. So if they bought it, Mazaltov. Um, is bank masculine but banking feminine? Yes. Bank is masculine. Bank, bankim is the plural. But banking, the act of banking is banka ut. That ut ending at, a, at the end of a word always means that the word is feminine. Anything, sionut, Zionism is feminine, for example. What is the plural of sniff? Sniff, sniffim. Sniffim. Okay, let me make that bigger for you. But otherwise, okay. sniff, sniffim. All right, so let's get to some more questions here. When you add ut, does it change uh, masculine to feminine? Yes, like I said, bank, bank, banka ut, banking. Tsioni, Zionist, Tsion from the word Zion, Tsion, Tsionut, Zionism is feminine. Okay. Um, uh, Adrichal is an architect, Adrichalut, architecture is feminine. How do you say credit card? Sorry if I didn't put that on here, but let me say it again, because I know I said it aloud. Kaltis Ashai. Credit card. I'll move the screen in just a second for this. Car. Tis. Ash. Bye. Okay. Credit cards, because this is a compound word, this is uh, smichut. We talked about this a lot when you put two nouns together to create a new um, word, just like we do in English. It changes the pronunciation and the spelling a little bit. So in this case, it's kal ti se ash rai. Right? Kal ti se a. Car, T, C, Ash, Rai. Okay, in compound words in Hebrew, the first word is the word that's going to be pluralized, not the second. Okay, this is credit cards. Both of these are masculine. Okay, let's get to some more questions. Can you continue to use your American credit card when you get to Israel? Absolutely. Um, there are some. Not a lot. There are some um, transactions you can only do with an Israeli credit card. They usually have to do with something with regards to taxes or things like that. But most of the time, you can always use your American credit card. You just want to be sure any transaction fees, what those are with regards to America. Um, but yes, just like you can use your American credit card anywhere in the world, most things in Israel can be paid for it. And when I say most things, that also includes things like your water bill, Utilities can be paid for it, um, not just um, groceries and things like that. Ah, uh, if you haven't mentioned, please translate bank guarantee, which we always need when renting an apartment. Great point. So anyone who has rented an apartment in Israel knows there are a lot of different things that, that um, landlords often ask for. And there's a couple different ones that they ask for. One is called a... Um, there's a couple different ones that a bank specifically gives. It's this one, and then there's a Arevut Bankait. Okay. 
Okay, this one is a promissory note. And this one is a bank. Let me just see. Yeah, this is the bank guarantee. This is star hov. And this is a revut ban. Uh, it. Um, again, that risk averse thing comes up again when we're renting apartments, and oftentimes it affects um, Olim the most. Why? Because um, you don't have family here, and oftentimes family helps out in financial situations in Israel. And uh, it's not so much about credit line as it is not having family here, not having a line of people that you can immediately turn to if you don't pay your rent or whatever happens that's in the um, rental contract. And so oftentimes, and this specifically affects Olim, that they're asked to give a whole bunch of other things in addition to simply first and last month's rent. Usually that's you know what you hear in the movies and TV and in a lot of countries. In Israel, you often also have to give either a shtalchov, a promissory note, or an arevud bankait. Both of these are usually a couple months worth of rent that basically protect the renter, um, the landlord, not the rent, the landlord. I renter and rentee, I get mixed up. The landlord in the event that something happens to the apartment or you skip town or whatever that is. And often it will be phrased to you like this, I'm afraid you're going to jump on a plane and not come back and I will be out of money. Simple as that. Um, I I'll give you a quick story. Um, actually, I won't give you a quick story because this is recorded um, about that. But just know that these are two things that are usually issued by a bank um, for that. And you can speak to your banking about it. I don't I haven't done this for a long time, so I can't um, give you personal advice on this, but there is information online about both of these things, um, and you can simply use Google Translate for them. It's pretty straightforward, but these are usually one of the two things that um, a bank, that a landlord requires that a bank can help provide. Okay. Is there a credit line for standing orders and one for bank transfers on a checking account? Um, no. This all comes from the same thing. Let me Let me pull up that again. Horat um, Keva, right? Let's say again, um, your, there's no separate one for standing orders and bank transfers on a checking account. Your checking account has a Mizgeo Tashrai, right? Let's say it's 2000 shekel. So within from you know 10 million shekel and more to minus 2,000 shekel, you're good. You're covered that extra 2,000 shekel if you dip below zero. That's what that Mizgeo Tashrai means. Within that, you can do whatever you want. You can pull out money. You can leave money in there. Um, you can use Horat Keva to pay for things. You can um, do Havara Bankait for things. It's all covered under the one Mizgeo Tashrai, which is your checking account. Uh, mortgage. Great question. Banks also provide mortgages. The word for mortgage in modern Hebrew is actually not modern Hebrew in its origin is mortgage is ma, mash. Let me move this out of the way so you can see mash kan. Okay, mashkanta is mortgage. Um, that's also something, if it's through your bank and it's through your bank account, it'll show up in your um, transactions as well. Okay. Um, how many banks are in Israel? I honestly don't know. Wikipedia, I'm sure, has the full list of them. Um, there are quite a number of banks in Israel. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, how many days do you have each month to pay the balance? Again, you pick with the bank when you set up a bank account and you can change this as you go, your Moed Chiyuv, right? So let's say your Moed Chiyuv for your credit cards is the 10th of the month. It will automatically be deducted from your account. You don't have to touch a thing, okay? You can go in and already... Um, uh, you can go early and, of course, for a fee... 
um, withdraw the balance that's owed from your credit card early. So you want to free up some credit on your credit card, right? You can go in and most banks will allow you to do that again for a fee is to basically pay early. Instead of the 10th, let's say on the first, I already want to um, clear out partly or all of my um, credit, uh, credit card balance. You can do that. But otherwise, automatically, you don't do anything on Moed Chiyuv. You will be, your bank account will be charged this and it will all automatically be withdrawn. Can you keep your money in a foreign bank and avoid using the local banks while living in Israel? No, you do need to open a local bank in Israel for multiple reasons. One of the biggest reasons is as Olim, you get something called Sal Klita, which is a, um, a little bit of money from the government. Um, you need, you don't get that money or you get the initial check and then subsequent payments only if you have a, a bank account in Israel. That's not something that can be um, wired to a foreign account. You need to have a bank account in Israel. Even if you don't touch it, um, there are a lot of things that just simply can't be done while being a full-time Israeli resident without an Israeli bank account. Bank account. Um, great question. If you do Tashlumim, is there a service charge with that? Great question. Let me put this word here because I didn't talk about it. Even though we're running out of time, I'm happy to talk about this one. Another really important part of um, finances in Israel is Tashlumim. Tashlumim. Tashlumim literally means payments, but that's not what it means here. It's basically... Um, and it's not layaway either, right? There's the concept of you pay an in installments, and then once the installments are done, you get the thing. This is different. This is paying in installments, and you walk away with the um, item. So let's say you go to a clothing store, and they ask you, do you want to pay in, in tashlumim? That means, let's say your the total balance is 300 shekel, right? 300 shekel, um, you say, great, I want to pay in, um, I think it's, two or three tashlumim you can normally do. Um, what will happen is the following. Your credit card um, will be blanked out for 300 shekel, right? But for three months, only 100 shekel will come out, right? So you have three months to pay for that. Those installments, right, are monthly. But the total amount of that bill is still given a block on your card. So if you have 2,000 shekels in addition to your um, checking account, this isn't about your checking account, this is your credit card. If you have a 2,000 shekel limit on your credit card, 300 is automatically blocked until you finish paying in these monthly installments. For some people that makes sense in terms of the money they have in their checking account. Some people would rather pay for the whole thing upfront. It is up to you. You always need to ask when you pay for things in Tashlumim, and this is something that you pay for directly to a retailer, you need to ask and see if there's ribit, if there's interest. Um, most places, depending on the amount of money charged and the amount of tashlumim, there usually is not ribit, but you do need to check that because oftentimes people will offer very attractive means of payment through tashlumim, and in small letters, it'll say with interest. Okay, but very important to check, and thank you for reminding me that word, tashlumim. Kaltis's card. I'm sorry if I didn't say that before. Kaltis is a card, credit card. This literally translates to credit card. Kaltis is a card or a ticket, a shrai credit. Uh, Picadon comes from this verb, lehafkid, to deposit. Someone asked about is the root of it. It's the same root, pay kuf dalid. Pikadon as lehavkid. Hafkada is a deposit. To deposit is lehavkid. Um, for transfer of larger amounts of funds from overseas to Israel, what is the best approach with the Israeli bank regarding source of funds? That's a whole other thing, I believe, on the Nefesh Benefesh website they cover. I don't know off the top of my head. I apologize for that. Okay, apps really need to get to this. Um, I'm going to say this without the screen here. Apps. 
Folks, if you are struggling with Hebrew, first off, that's always okay. Do not use an app, not of banks, not for your healthcare, not for anything. You can always use your bank's website on your phone. Ignore all the windows that pop up and say, would you like to use our app instead or anything like that? Why? Because if you're using Google Translate or some online translate to simultaneously translate anything that you do online, it will not work with the app. And apps in Israel are not usually coming with English. Okay, we are not a large amount of big enough of a community in Israel to warrant translating everything into English. I know that hurts a lot of people to say that, but is the absolute truth. We are somewhere between 100 to 120,000 native English speakers in Israel. That is not nearly enough people to justify companies creating a whole new interface in English. Again, that's hard to hear, but that's the reality. If you use a website on your phone, okay? If you use a website on your phone, if you go to lilmi.co.il, Bank Lumi's website, you can do it on your phone and it works fine. If, and I can use the translation interface of Google Translate on my phone. If I use their app, it's gonna be much harder to translate. So again, this goes, by the way, this is sage advice for any country, any language. You do not have to use the app if the website works for you, okay? You don't. They're trying to get you to use the app because it also allows them further information from your phone, like your contacts and your location. You don't have to use the app, okay? Bank Lumi is my bank. I do not use their app. I'm not penalized. I'm not lacking in activities to use. And it is no less easy or difficult than to simply use their website. Full stop. You don't have to use their apps. And if you're struggling with Hebrew, don't use an app. That goes for your healthcare. That goes for your bank. That goes for anything. You don't have to use the app, especially if you're translating with Google Translate or another service. I'll be happy to say that again multiple times, folks, but that is the absolute divine truth. You do not have to use the apps. Okay, let me get to a couple other words here. Um, Hoat Keva, is there communication between Alnon and the bank when it char charges? Absolute when it changes. Yeah, so what happens is Alnona, you can sign up for Horat Keva, and then once a year, it's going to ask you to renew it. And if it changes, it'll certainly ask you, um, do you approve this? But every time the bank will have a standing order, excuse me, the municipality will have a standing order to pull the money out from your bank account with permission of you and the bank. That's what that means. Okay, sorry, just one second. What is the difference between Horat Keva and when you set up for payment? Um, Horat Keva is for future payments, right? Again, something you pay once a month, once every other month, like your municipality tax. That's something in the future. Set up for payment in payments, Tashlumim, something you're buying right now. If I go to Zara after I sign close out here, I can ask to pay for Tashlumim. Um, assuming that I'm buying a certain amount and assuming that's the system that they have there. Okay, that's my decision at the time. Just like Horaet Keva is my decision at the time for future payments to the municipality, to the electric company and so forth. Uh, three digit code on the back of your card. It literally means Shalosh Sifot Al Gava Kaltis. It literally just simply, when you hear the word Shalosh three and someone's asking you for that, it simply means that. Otherwise, it'll say CVV, just like it does in English on other cards. Okay, example. Let's say your credit card limit is 2,000 shekel and you arrange to pay for a subscription at 100 shekel a month. What is the impact on credit card for the amount still unpaid? Great question. Okay, if your credit card limit is 2,000 shekel and you arrange for a payment subscription at 100 shekel a month, this is gonna be a difference between, like I said, Horat Kevin Tashlumim. Are you paying for 100 shekel a month for the entire year or are you paying month by month? If you're paying the whole year, right, you're essentially setting up Horat Keva. If you're just paying month by month and there's a standing order, you'll just be charged that. So for example, um, 
I'm trying to think of something that would be that. But let's say you sign up for a newspaper that's 100 shekel a month and you get X amount in a month, right? They'll usually have a deal. Either you sign up for the whole year in advance and it works out to 100 shekel a month or you pay month by month. Either way, it'll be automated. That'll be something that you work out with them and it'll say that specifically when you sign up. Okay, how to write Banklo Me in Hebrew? Wonderful, let me do that, just one second. Okay, we already had the word for bank, right? Bank is bank, bank. Le Umi, right? Le Umi literally means national bank. Uh, Prepayment penalty fee, it depends on the bank. And again, that will be listed in their um, list of commissions that they charge you. Um, do you know how long a bank account will remain open if I left money in it, but I made no transactions in four years other than the monthly fees I had to leave? Okay. Um, it should remain open. As long as there's money in the account, it should remain open, but suggest speaking with the bank. Um, there's no reason it should be closed simply because you're not using it. But as long as there's money in it and it hasn't reached Meshichat Yetel, it's fine. It should be fine. But again, check directly with the bank. Do any Israeli credit cards offer points or rebates? Great question. Um, a lot of them are now recognizing they need to give something back. Um, after charging all this amount. So many credit cards will do some sort of cash back. Um, the ones affiliated with Bank Lumi, which are called Max, will give you anywhere from two to I think 8% cash back when you buy from certain vendors. Um, there are some, there's, I believe it's Diners and American Express that's affiliated with Elal. If you fly Elal and get points with them, um, there aren't the same incentives um, in using credit cards and there isn't the same sort of points and rebates like you get from American credit cards. Okay, in Israel, there is no Chase Rewards. There is no Capital One. There's not anything nearly equivalent to that in Israel. Um, you, what you do get is very small in comparison, but you can get, um, I know for Leumi, it's either uh, Elal or United points, but again, it's not in the volume that you do with things like Chase or Capital One in America. Um, someone asks, is it easy for your account to be hacked on your cell? Again, I don't use the apps for multiple reasons, but one reason is safety. I don't know what safety protocol is in there, but certainly if my phone was unlocked and someone went in, I'm sure there's a safety protocol further to get into those financial apps, but I don't use them. So I can't, I can't answer that for you. Okay, we got to stop here again. So Dagaba for everyone for um, joining us today. Again, um, you will receive a copy of this um, session and the web and the vocabulary that went with it in the next few days, along with a link to our evaluation survey. Please take a few minutes to fill it out. It really helps me plan um, for the future and helps us as an organization plan what we'd like to do with Hebrew and helping you with your Hebrew, whatever your questions and concerns are with using Hebrew in general. Um, we'll be back online on the 17th of July. I promise you'll get announcements for it in advance. If you don't, Hebrew at nbn.org.il. Please write us with any questions, concerns, comments you have. Todah rabah, see you all in a few weeks. Take care.